Um, just speak on your relationship with President Barack Obama <laughs> and um, being appointed the 12th administrator of NASA, like, um, did he call you personally or how did that process uh, work out? Interesting question because I, you know, um, I, I hate to disappoint people, but as the NASA administrator, I wasn't a member of the cabinet, so I didn't get to see the president every day. I got to see him quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Anytime he did anything that was science or engineering or technology oriented, then the, the heads of the science agencies and departments, we always got an invitation from the president that said, hey, I'm doing this, come on over to the White House and help me. And uh, so, so we were there quite frequently. He, he put on a science fair every year where he brought 300 or so kids in from all over the United States with their science fair projects and let them put them up all over the White House. He was, he was fascinated by that and he would take time in the week that they were there and go out and actually walk around and mess with every single experiment and talk to the students. He was, he was just magic that way. He was an incredible person to be around as was Mrs. Obama. So mm -hmm. I, I wish I could say, I, you know, I saw him every day, they were my best pals, but they weren't. Um, <laughs> you know, we got a chance to interact with them now and then. Um, but he, the good thing was he didn't call me every day. He, in fact, he never called me. Um, and I found out, I, I kind of felt, neglected because I never heard from the president in my first year. And, and I, I complained about it and, and word got back to the, to, the, um, to the president's, the head of the president's cabinet, the cabinet secretary, who was a guy named Chris Liu. And Chris called me and said, hey, I understand you're feeling unloved. Uh, he said, why don't you come over and have a cup of coffee? So I went over to the White House the next morning and we went into the, to the White House mess and sat down and had a cup of coffee. And he said, look, I understand how you feel everybody wants to talk to the president all the time. He said, you gotta understand one thing. Unless the president's not happy with what you're doing, you're not gonna hear from him. He said, if you don't ever hear from the president, just count your blessings because it means you're doing a great job. He's happy with it because he's, he's got other people he's calling every single day because they're not doing well. So he said, you know, I, I understand you wanna, you wanna be around the president all the time. You wanna hear from him. Ain't gonna happen as long as you're doing well. So I never heard, you know, I never, I never got a, I actually went to him a few times to, to complain about something that was about to happen. And he gave me the respect of saying, okay, come on over, let's talk about it. And let me hear your, let me hear your case. Uh, only happened three times that I can remember. One of them was about the budget. Uh, and, and another time was about when we were getting ready to send him down to the Kennedy Space Center to try to make happy with the, with the space world because we, were get, we, were, we had announced that we were gonna phase out of the shuttle uh, you know, by 2010, which did not come as good news to a lot of the the space shuttle enthusiast and everything. So we, we talk about things like that. And I got to travel with him on Air Force One once down to, down to the Kennedy Space Center. And, and better than that, I got a chance to ride with him on Marine One, the helicopter that picked him up on the South Lawn of the White House and took him out to Andrews Air Force Base. That was, for me as a Marine uh, and an aviator, that was, the, that was the thrill of a lifetime. 